Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. South Africa's electricity market remains in focus following ESCOM's announcement of fresh delays to its build program. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss some of the big issues facing Energy Minister Ben Martins as he takes over from De Poor Peters. Hi Terence. Martins is responsible for a portfolio larger than electricity, but electricity issues remain dominant. What in your view are the priorities facing the new minister? Yeah, the new minister comes in with, it's a bit vague as to why the switch was made. Um, no clarity's really emerged, no satisfactory analysis really has emerged as to why they switched uh, Martins to energy and Depot Peters across to uh, transport, where she inherits the poison chalice that is Etols. But um, what is definitely certain is that Martins has a fairly uh, large workload that he immediately comes into. Cabinet's just approved that the draft integrated energy uh, plan report be released for public consultation. So immediately he's going to be entering a phase of engaging with the sector. On broader issues beyond uh, electricity, the energy plan looks at the full master plan uh, for all energy sources. And it looks at the, sort of our liquid fuels roadmap, as well as the, um, the electricity uh, plan. As well as in parallel, there's going to be the integrated resource plan revision. Now that's going to be a major priority, I think, for the new minister, because it's quite clear now that the integrated uh, RP 2010 is out of date because the assumptions and parameters used within the, the one that was really put together in a very hasty, but although very thorough way, uh, post the 20, 2008 uh, power crisis where we needed a, a clear vision of what we were going to do around building new capacity was built on much higher demand growth assumptions than we currently experience. I mean, we saw Eskom last week announcing that last year they had a decrease of 3.7% in demand or consumption for the product. And they've already said in the first two months of the current fiscal financial year that they've entered, they've had another 2% decline year on year. So we've got a whole different, really, environment for electricity. We've got these two big power stations which have been delayed uh, in the form of Madupi and Kusile. And that does mean that the immediate power system is under tight, uh, tight conditions and there's a lot of constraints and there's a lot of effort going into trying to keep the lights on. But he enters a time, uh, as Benedict, uh, Ben Martins does, when you know, we have to look at what the longer term trajectory is, the 20 year trajectory, because we're not meeting our economic growth, nor our electricity demand growth forecasts that we had previously uh, expected. And so that, that plan has to be quite uh, thoroughly revised, because we've got really big ticket items coming in the form of new renewables up to 17,000 megawatts in the uh, current plan but between 2010 and 2030. We've got big nuclear capacities potentially coming on in the form of 9,600 megawatts of nuclear. And then we've also got, you know, coal, additional coal and gas and hydro in that plan. And there's been a lot of criticism that there's not enough gas and potentially not enough hydro in the plan. And there's a lot of questions as to whether nuclear is still the best option given how costly it is. So he comes in and uh, there's a, a full entry as he enters uh, his new role. Peters did well in ensuring the renewables programs got off the ground. Do you think Martins will build on that momentum? I think that uh, we need some clarity around the new RP, the revision, to know how much renewables we're actually going to be deploying. Um, we are currently uh, installing uh, new, uh, renewable energy at, uh, in line with the current RP. So we've had two rounds of uh, bidding and both have been very successful. There's been more interest than could be accommodated by the department, which is quite uh, positive. And we've had the first uh, projects already being built, both solar and wind. And the second round projects, which included an element of a mini hydro, have also closed. So, uh, are also closing. We haven't had all of them closed, but there's again, mostly wind, solar and and uh, some hydro coming in through the second round. We've got the third round coming up now um, with the bids, uh, the submissions having to be made in August. And we'll know what the round three winners look like uh, later this year. 
and then there will be a period of another financial closure period taking us into 2014. So it's a good program. I think it's been well received. It is uh, highly structured, highly rigid. It is more geared towards the larger renewables players. But I think it was about getting runs on the board in the renewable space. They wanted the the, uh, the people, the, the size, the scale that could actually cope with this program. But there has been criticism that it's quite uh, labor and regulatory intensive for smaller renewables developers. So I think we're going to have to see some change there from Martins. But the big question is how much renewables will we actually be deploying over the 20-year horizon versus what's in the current plan. But I think the renewable uh, procurement program has been a, a flagship and I think is a feather in uh, the Pope Peters' cap that she got a program that looks clean and quite respectable globally. And it seems that there's still more interest than allocation, which means that uh, I think uh, South Africa is going to do well out of that program. So he'll need to sustain that momentum. The question is at what pace? Then there are the big questions of introducing baseload independent power producers, nuclear energy and fracking. I think those, those are really uh, important priorities. I think the baseload uh, potential from private producers, um, those have to be accelerated. It's good to have the renewables uh, in the system and in the mix that will help, but it doesn't necessarily offer energy at the time that you want it. So we've really seen before Minister Peters left, she, they did conclude the peaking power plant with GDF Sewers Consortium, and that should be uh, closing and moving into construction hopefully soon. But we, we need to um, get other private producers producing not just intermittent power, but baseload power. And there are a lot of opportunities in the space. The last time a request for information was sent out around projects uh, in the space, uh, the, the, the response was overwhelming. Uh, the DIEs decided to refresh that uh, request for information and registration of projects. And that process is, is sort of underway now. And we should have so, so, sort of visibility as, as to whether there's as much interest as there was shown last time they made that, did that Marcus test. But I imagine there's still a number of projects we heard this week, both GDF, uh, Suez and uh, um, Exara announced that they are looking seriously at a 600 megawatt power plant up in the Waterberg area based on a greenfield coal project. And uh, I imagine there's a number of these around. We know about the Anglo project, we know about the Extrata projects, both of which seem to be in a little bit of a state of a hiatus. And we need some clarity. And I think what's important is we need a procurement pro program similar to the one that we've had in Renewable for these base load projects, whether they be uh, coal, gas, uh, imported hydro or even domestic hydro, we need to start having a concerted procurement program. So I think that's a priority and it will also, I think, you know, uh, uh, show that we're still serious about having IPPs in the mix, independent power producers in the mix, and that we're not going to just be all about uh, ESKIM because ESKIM does take up a lot of the energy and focus of the media and of government, and we're going to have others helping out using their balance sheets, their skills, their technologies to try and change this energy demand uh, and supply equation, which is not in our favor, because we need that equation to have enough reserve margin for, for the future, for growth. The problem again is we need a RP visibility because we can't go ahead with massive procurement programs that, where we don't necessarily need that amount of capacity. And I think that that again comes to the issue of nuclear, you know, I think the revision of the RP has to, I know we've got a process that's being led by the deputy president around nuclear and we need to get clarity there and it's been going for some time, but, and we need to make a decision. But the timing of that is going to be quite important now around where do we think electricity demand is uh, going in the future, as well as how much can be supplied by these other projects around uh, coal, gas, and imported hydro, because you could find a lot of the gap might be filled. On the other hand, you need some certainty around nuclear because it's a long-term uh, decision and it's about building an industry, not really just building power stations. So there's a lot of pressure on Peters to make those uh, decisions. And finally, there's the issue of fracking. You know, it's changed the energy equation, particularly in North America. We potentially have a lot of shale gas in this country. It is controversial 
the mining of shale gas isn't universally, universally accepted around the world. Um, the US has gone ahead and they're seeing major spin-offs from that in terms of a reindustrialization around energy intensive industries and a lot of investment happening around, um, not uh, around the electricity, but also using the shale gas. Even our own Sassel is investing heavily around the arbitrage opportunity that's opened up to convert that cheap gas into high value liquid fuels and chemicals. So we have to make a decision around this. Now, I've heard some analysis saying that the reason why depot peters were shifted was that there was not enough movement on fracking and shale gas uh, decisions. And I doubt that very much because it wasn't within her ambit to make that decision. It really falls within the, another department uh, of minerals resources. And we have to make some serious decisions around that because it can be an energy economy game changer if we prepare to move ahead but we're wanting to move ahead in the most responsible way. So it, it's another thing that uh, as a policy department, um, Ener Energy Minister Martins is going to get his head, have to get his head around and make some crucial decisions. So it's a very full inbox for both the Peters as well as, but especially I think for Ben Martins, he's got a lot uh, to deal with over the next three, few months. Because as we know, the election comes up uh, in, in April, May next year, and there's no guarantee that any of these ministers will be there in future. So I think there'd have to be a lot of uh, urgency shown. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.